You're listening to the Behind the Ears podcast because everybody does Disney differently. The Behind the Ears podcast crew would like to thank the following sponsors for their generous support. Hey everybody, it's Mr. Chris and I got to tell you about Expedition Roasters. Listen, I'm a, I'm a pretty big coffee drinker just like a lot of you are, but these people have got coffee right. Their coffees are made from selectively sourced premium and specialty grade Arabica beans. They provide the absolute best flavor and aroma and select roast even come directly from a single estate farm for a truly perfect cup that is never bitter. They've got awesome Disney inspired flavors such as Roundhouse Roast, Route 66, Skipper's Brew, Dark Side Roast, Redhead Rum, and one of my favorites, Bob Slater's Brew. Listen, if you want to have the taste of Disney in every cup, give them a try today. ExpeditionRoasters.com and Behind the Ears podcast listeners gets an extra 20% off your first order by using the coupon code EARS20. That's right, E-A-R-S-2-0. And you can find them over at ExpeditionRoasters.com. Brew your happy place. If you have a little one and you're going to Walt Disney World, you're going to need a stroller. I'll tell you what, KingdomStrollers.com is the place where you want to look into. I'll tell you, you know, I've destroyed my fair share of strollers while, while at Walt Disney World, and those things are not cheap. But getting something from KingdomStrollers.com, they'll be able to help you pick out the perfect stroller for you. And the nice part is, is that because they're a Disney preferred provider, they'll be able to drop it off and pick it up right from your Disney resort at no extra charge. So if you don't want to necessarily destroy your stroller in the process and you want to have a great Disney vacation with your little one, contact kingdomstrollers.com and they'll set you right up. That's kingdomstrollers.com. Do you want to save around 40% off Disney's prices for deluxe on-property accommodations? Contact dvc-rental.com. They help out Disney Vacation Club owners rent out points that they're not going to use. These points mean savings for you on your next trip at Walt Disney World, Disneyland, Vero Beach, Florida, and Hilton Head Island in South Carolina. The DVC member books everything in your name just like any other reservation. And if you ever decide that you want to become a DVC member, you can check out our sister company, buyandselldvc.com. As a licensed realtor, they sell DVC contracts for members at a savings of 30 to 40% off Disney's prices. And if you're looking to sell your contract, buyandselldvc.com has one of the industry's lowest commissions at only 6.5%. Again, that's dvc-rental.com for your rental needs and buyandselldvc.com to buy or sell into the Disney Vacation Club at a large discount. And make sure you tell them that the Behind Ears podcast crew sent you. <laughs> Oh, that was fancy. Even has the whole echo and everything. Echo, echo. Hmm, that's that's not good. That is a terrible sound. There we go. It is gone. I hope that recording got it though, because that's gonna be super cool. <laughs> Welcome to Wrigley. Well, that was a fun intro. <clears throat> Glad to bring them on. DVC rental dot com, the newest sponsor to Behind the Ears Podcast. I am Uncle Danny. That 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 is Mr. Chris. Sir, how you doing? I am doing wonderfully. It has been an absolutely crazy week. And you know what? Every time that we come here on a Thursday night, especially when it's our feature Friday, I did that wrong. Feature Thursday. It means that we're closer to Friday. That's what I really wanted to say. And it's just not working tonight. But I'll tell you what. <clears throat> we have here tonight, not one, but two awesome guests that are going to be joining us and they are former disney cast members that we're going to actually talk to them a little bit about what was it really like to live down there as a cast member and the cool part is is that one of them was um one of them was uh blah 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 part of the college program and the other i just i believe was uh just, you know simply down there i don't believe was a cast or was a college program cast member uh, I'll find out here in a second. We actually had to cut our little intro short because I, well, surprise, surprise, I was talking too much. And uh, yeah, go ahead, Danny. Make make fun. I no, yeah. yeah, I don't need to. When you call yourself out, we're good, hey, Danny. I'm calling myself out. So, <laughs> but it's gonna be a great time. And like as everybody knows, our shows are unscripted, unrehearsed, unedited, and um, so 
we have some questions for them and this, that, and the other, but we're going to see where the conversation goes. We're also obviously going to take conversations and questions from our listening audience right now, and it's going to be absolutely epic. So, Danny, why don't you bring them on the air? <clears throat> One, two, three, and go. Hi, Mara. Hi. <laughs> how are you doing tonight? And we got one more guest. You thought we were only bringing one person on. Uh, 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 uh. That's not how we do it. We bring three on. We're making the Brady Bunch squares. That is Hillary. <laughs> Miss, how are you doing tonight? Hillary. Can you not hear me? Make it louder. You got oh. it. You just heard us fine before. Hillary. Hello. Can you there you me? are. Hey, there we go. Yay. Okay. We just wanted to make sure because I'm looking at myself. This is why we tested. <laughs> <laughs> so so we have we have Mara and Hillary with us today. And, um, you know, a, a few weeks back, um, and actually this has been brewing a little bit for, for the past few weeks. A few weeks back, I, I asked, I go, hey, are there any any former cast members that would really like to talk to us? And and we got we got some, uh, some responses. And unfortunately, it was one of those weird cases where... I decided that, hey, I'm going to ask him right around the time that Danny and I were going to go to Milwaukee to do a wedding. And, you know, basically things just got really crazy. That was really stupid of me in a sense of timing. So I finally reached back out to both Hillary and Mara and said, hey, I really didn't forget about you guys. And, you know, would you guys still be willing to come on the show? And you're like, cool. And so now the thing is, is we love to have cast members, both current and past uh join us to talk about disney what's it like and so on and so forth uh so if you are a disney cast member and would like to talk to us a little bit about what's going on hey just let us know i already see some comments in the uh comments in the comic section um that uh kind of indicate that we do have some current and former cast members li uh, listening and that's cool we will be more than happy to talk to you later so first off let's go ahead and have our guests kind of introduce themselves. Mauro, I'm going to start with you because you have you're, you're sporting the ears. I mean, it's just yeah. one of those things. I mean, they're awesome. And he's basically saying, Hillary, you should have wore ears. That's what's happening here. He's shunning. Last minute decision. Ear. Yeah, there you go. So no, 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 no. I, I I wouldn't I wouldn't do that. Hillary, what? Or sorry, Mara, why don't you why don't you tell us a little bit about? <laughs> Gosh, this is going to be funny because I have so many, <laughs> so many pictures on the screen, and we haven't really done it like this since our marathon show. And when we did it, it was, it was with Lisa and Jimmy from the Disney Nerds podcast, and that was that was awesome too. Um, Mara, why don't you tell us a little bit about you know who you are, what you do, where you're from, and tell us what did you do over at Disney? All right, uh, like you said, my name is Mara. Um, I am from Tennessee, and I am currently working for a small company as a graphic designer. Um, back in 2014, spring of 2014, I was a part of the Disney College program, and I actually worked in downtown Disney before it turned into Disney Springs. Um, and my role was merchandise. So I really, really enjoyed it. Feel free to ask me whatever you want about it. I'm Sure, I'll remember some stories as we go. So, okay, cool. Glad to be here. Excellent, excellent. And Hillary, why don't you go ahead and inter introduce yourself as well, please? Hi, uh, Hillary Kirtland, born and raised in Miami, Florida. Uh, currently living in the DC area. My experience at Disney, I joined right after I graduated undergrad through the college program as well. Um, I worked front desk and concierge at Saratoga, Spring Saratoga Springs and Old Key West, so very close to downtown Disney and uh, now Disney Springs. I then took a professional internship uh, immediately following the uh, college program and worked in the office that sells the meeting and convention space. And then I worked a year there full time after that. Oh, well, cool. So, so in other words, you actually did take some of your college program experience and actually parlay that into uh, I'll say a professional non-college program experience. Yeah. So it was college program, professional internship, full time. That's wow. cool. Okay. Okay, cool. So, I mean, cause I think it's kind of funny. I think we've only talked to <laughs> so far college program participants that um, only did college program and then obviously went on to other things. So that's going to be really cool uh, when we, um, when we finally talk about that. And if you don't mind Hillary, about how long ago, was that when you actually oh, worked? I started in 2012 and then left in March 2014. 
Okay. So, wow. So, okay. We were there at the same time. I was, I was <laughs> yeah, going to say, you guys were. We overlapped a little bit. <laughs> and, uh, and being that, uh, if you were, if you were there during those particular times, I almost, I could almost guarantee we, we crossed paths one point or another, <laughs> taking into consideration that, uh, Saratoga Springs is my home resort and ah. I absolutely, I absolutely love Saratoga Springs. Um, Welcome I, home. thank you. I actually think that Saratoga <laughs> Springs myself is one of the most underrated resorts of all of Disney property, especially there are some people that call it the hood. I don't know why, um, but I, I thoroughly enjoy it. I do not regret my uh, uh, membership there at all. So, well, I'll tell you what, because we have the two of you, and I want to get a chance to kind of get some contrasted comparisons uh, in the sense of our conversations. Um, I'd really like for us to start off with some fun stuff. Uh, I'd really like to just kind of have a, little chat here um what actually kind of got you really interested in disney especially as making that leap into um becoming a college program cast member and you know what were you really expecting from it just overall and hillary i'm going to go ahead and start with you first okay um my tie to disney like most people is fairly emotional started really young I grew up in Florida, so I was up there pretty frequently for family vacations. Um, I'll tell a really kind of cheesy emotional story from when I was a toddler. I had heart surgery, and right after my recovery, I went to uh, Cinderella Castle to you know, have our dining experience, and Cinderella danced with me to sing A Dream is a Wish Your Heart Makes right after recovering from heart <laughs> surgery. It was quite a magical moment for myself. Um, and my mom's best friend growing up worked for Disney. So we were there all the time. And when it came time to look for full-time <laughs> jobs, it was the dream, quite literally. <laughs> wow. Okay, cool. Mara, what about you? Um, I've always been a Disney fan. Loved watching the Disney Channel with my siblings every day. Um, but I was more of a Pixar fan. And it was actually my dream to work at Pixar one day. I haven't gotten there yet. I don't know if I will, um, but just became obsessed with Pixar. And uh, the about the time I was in college, I'd found Freedom and um, they were starting to release a lot of really good movies. And so I just had to have everything. And it was also right about that same time that a bunch of my fellow um, fellow classmates went and did the Disney college program and I was like, what's that? And so I uh, looked it up and I did it the same as Hillary. I did it right after I graduated, um, tried to do a professional internship, but ended up getting too busy. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm still obsessed. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> a, good, a good obsession to have, but also I think it's one of those things where um, I think it's one of those things where it's, do you think the, well, let me ask you this. Do you think the obsession changed now that you've gone through uh, a season at the college program? I think it's gotten worse. (laughs) (laughs) How so? You can can ask my husband. The uh, post Disney college program depression was really real. Oh, really? So like worse than like, you know, having to come home from an annual trip. It was worse. It was worse. I had to be back. I actually went back. I left my program in May and I went back for the Halloween party just a few short months later, just cause I had to be back. Okay. okay. That's, that's... What about you, Hillary? I don't think Hillary can hear me. No, Hillary. <laughs> no, Hillary. I don't think so. so. Sorry. Say that again. Could you hear me? No, can you we, hear me? You, we can you hear you. You can't, you can't, oh. you can't hear I'm Danny. Can some you? Technical difficulties. <laughs> oh, that's okay. Um, Danny, obviously, for some reason, you can't hear Danny. I can hear Danny. I can't hear him at all. Can okay. you hear me now? Since we started, I haven't heard him at all. Oh, wow. Well, that's, why, that's why I've been talking to her. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. okay. So, so that's kind of interesting. And, and yes, everybody, yes, we are totally live, unscripted. And yes, we just, we're not going to edit this out. Why? Because it would just not be us. So <clears throat> with that being said, we were kind of wondering about what what kind of expectations did you have as a college pro- program a participant and at the same time you know kind of going along the lines of what Mara was saying you know do you think it kind of you know did it did it feed your Disney obsession or did it change it um I think it definitely changed it 
um, in a way that's a much bigger appreciation for how well everything is run. Um, I think behind the scenes, there's just so much work and effort that goes in to making every moment, every interaction, every <coughs> transaction to be an actual magical moment. Um, I love the care that the company has for its employees. I love how well the culture is ingrained, not just in service delivery to our guests, um, but to each other as well. Like it's one of the few places I've truly felt like a family at work. Um, and so I have a much deeper appreciation for the little things when I go. Um, and I actually wasn't as involved in a lot of the details, uh, when I, before I started working there and I really got heavy into the, the hidden Mickeys and the backstories behind all the rides. Um, I can't tell you how many rides I toured. And so when I take friends now, I'm usually pointing out all the little secrets and sharing all the little tidbits of knowledge, like, oh, there's a hidden Jack Skellington right over there, and there's a hidden Mickey over here. So oh, I think wow. it definitely changed it to be a little bit different, which has been interesting. So how did it how did it go from college program to professional internship for you? Was that actually a part of your plan, or did an opportunity present itself to you? Uh, I actually went in with the plan that I wanted to stay at Disney uh, going into the college program. So I started at the front desk worked really, really closely with my leaders. Um, and then I got promoted to concierge once I was showing concierge ability at the front desk. Um, and then I just started asking them where I could network and to continue to grow. Uh, a natural progression from front desk and concierge uh, in the hotels is selling the hotel space uh, for meetings and things like that. So that was where I uh, sought out my professional internship, although it was one of, I'd say, 15 or 20 professional internships I applied to, um, and they're very heavily competitive. So um, I got really lucky to get one, and I was a, the team I ended up with was phenomenal. I couldn't have asked for a better setting to kick off a career, and the full time opportunity ended up presenting itself kind of serendipitously in that office. Well, that's actually really cool, but but it also, if I'm if I'm catching you right there is one thing to really be said about it. And that is the idea that you had, it was still competitive within, within your own company that you were working for. It wasn't something that you were just going to be handed. There were a lot of people going for very few, very coveted positions. Oh uh, yeah. I'll give you some statistics. Uh, Disney rotates 14,000 interns through their uh, college program every year. Wow. And that's just the college program, not the professional internships. And professional internships are less than half of that. And just about every college programmer, similar to Mara's experience, is completely intoxicated by the experience, myself included, and wants to continue. So if you have you know, all those people currently working there, plus all of the outside applications coming in, um, it becomes an extremely selective and competitive environment and... Um, not necessarily in a bad way. It's just Disney has the luxury of picking whoever they choose and whoever's the best fit at the time. And if your timing and your luck is right, um, you get, you know, you get, you get a spot. Like I said, it took me 20 applications to get to the one. Wow. I mean, was that like 20, uh, did you just like submit all like during your time there, you just kind of kept on throwing out apps here and there, you know, you have an app I, and you have an app and you have an app, you know, that type of thing. Um, a little bit of that and a little bit of trying to meet with the leaders that I was applying to. So it was who in my network there could connect me with the network I wanted to be a part of. And I think that's important to, for everybody to actually have an understanding. It's not just about going and doing a job. It's actually going there doing a job really well, but also to have a good understanding that if you want to go further, and this is actually a very good tip for anybody in a career path. It's not the way that you move through a company is not necessarily always just what you know. It's also who you know and whom you've worked with. Um, I've known that for quite some time. And at the same time, it's, it's awesome that I wish I would have known that even younger, like, while I was in college, what, you know, in an internship or something to that extent, you learned that as a part of your internship there as part of being a part of the college program. I had a great, fantastic lead who told me it's, not, it's similar to what you just said, but it's, it's not what you know. It's not even who you know. It's who knows you and who you are top of mind for. Amen. I could definitely, I, I totally 
I totally get that. I totally, I totally get that. So, um, Mara, back to you for a second. You basically said that your obsession became even more so. Um, so the question I have for you is this, with your idea of wanting to go, um, <clears throat> for your for your idea of wanting to be like go into a role over at Pixar, um, where did you see like did you see those types of opportunities to cross that line between Disney and Pixar as a part of what you were doing, uh, or did you have more of a challenge to mm-hmm. for that for that type of networking? Um, you cut out a little bit, so I missed a little well, bit of the question. I was also wondering if you had the same type of networking even available to you as Hillary did, and especially since you wanted to cross over into the Pixar realm of things. Gotcha. Um, no, not really. Um, because I did work in merchandise, I didn't really, and the fact that it was in downtown Disney, I wasn't even in the parks, so I had a very limited uh, amount of managers and higher ups that I saw throughout the, throughout the time there. Um, I didn't really get to branch out too, too much. Um, then with the fact that I was literally scheduled every single day, except for maybe one day out of the week, I was either <laughs> sleeping or working or in the parks. So amen to um, that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, um, but yeah, yeah. I did have a opportunity because as part of the college program, you get a chance to take classes. Um, Particularly if you're still in school, you have to take classes. Me, I had graduated, so I didn't necessarily have to take the classes, but I still chose to take two of them. Um, And the two that I chose were environmentality and then forget the actual name, but it was a leadership class. I took that one too. Yeah. Yeah. It was 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 a really good class. Actually, I've still got all of my notes. And I remember when I came back from my program, I just graduated college. I went and lived my dream working at Disney and came back and didn't have a job. So I definitely used those notes that I had taken in my leadership class um, and then were able, was able to apply them to my real life scenarios. So through those classes, I did meet a bunch more people. And then I got to meet a lot of um, like the teachers of the class. And then also the teachers would bring in people to talk to us, a panel of um, artists or a panel of managers or a panel of um, people who hire, you know, hire you to the company and to the college program. So I did get to branch out a little bit, but not in the direction that I wanted to. Okay. We're going to pause here for one quick second. I want to do a sound check really quick. Danny, why don't you go ahead and say something really quick? Hillary, can you hear me now? No, she still can't hear me. Okay. Mara, can, can you hear Danny? I can hear Danny and you. Just one. Okay, okay, so it's just Hillary who can't hear me. Okay. okay. Well, all right. So I'm gonna. All right. So are you ready to start it up again? I was gonna say, well, let's go ahead and start this up. How about this? You ask questions tomorrow. I ask questions to Hillary. <laughs> well, I'm gonna ask a question, and I just need you to obviously relay it to Hillary. But I'm gonna <laughs> yeah. go to Mara first. So after experiencing all the great things, working inside Disney, getting everything you want. Is there anything you take away from it that might be more on the negative side? Um, I do know that there are definitely the people out there that will try to take advantage of the company. And unfortunately, working in merchandise, I did get to see that side uh, a few times. Um, I had a shoplifting incident. I had an incident where... Um, customers would literally take advantage of the fact that I didn't speak their language. That was a very frustrating situation. Okay. And I, um, I noticed, I no- noticed you also referred to him as a customer. Yes. Yeah. And yes. That, that, that's, a, for people the, don't realize that's a particular, that's a particular, particular piece of Disney speak too. It is. And I'll, I'm not going to lie for about two or three years, after I left the program, I continued, no matter what I was doing, I went and worked at a retail store here in town and I kept using guests. I kept saying, have a magical day. I kept doing a two finger point. And let me tell you with my current job, I do not deal with the public at all. Um, unless it's through email. So 
after two years of that, it's literally just gone out of my head at this point. <laughs> so is there anything you would change for, you know, not even, you know, we'll get into like the advice you would give someone later, but if you could sit down with, you know, the CEO and all the way down, is there any input you would say that you would want to see change throughout the, the Disney college program? Mm. Long hours, maybe more free time. The, it wasn't, honestly, it wasn't too, too bad. Um, I did work a lot, and the majority of my shifts were nighttime shifts, closing shifts. And because I work in um, a very sociable part of the resort, we didn't close till midnight, which means that I didn't get out of there until one in the morning. But the good news is I love to sleep, so I got to sleep in the next day. Um, so there wasn't anything big that stood out. But I would say I would have liked to have maybe earlier shifts so that I could enjoy more of my day rather than sleeping in and being like, can I go to the park? No, not really, because I have to be at work in three hours. So I could see where that would be. I, I could see where, you know, you don't want to have a sense of normality. You know, in a sense of, you know, everybody else is going to work at eight o'clock in the morning. Why can't I? Why can't I? When go I'm ahead grocery and... shopping at two in the morning. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like, eh, it's like, you know, gee, can't I just, you know, I'd like to go see Illuminations tonight. You know, right. can't, can't I do that? You know, <clears throat> so Hillary kind of going along the same lines with what, what Danny was saying. I mean, what, what were some of the tougher, um, tougher type of experience have you seen? I mean, we always know about the great parts about Disney. I think a lot of people talk about it, but what were some of the challenges that you saw, especially since your role was also a little bit more, di- a little more different. Gosh, I speak horrible English today. <laughs> it's a little bit different than what Mara's dealt with. Also your position wasn't, I, there wasn't as much guest flow. In other words, where Mara was, you know, dealing with, you know, thousands of people a day you're probably dealing more with you know hundreds of a day. Mm-hmm. what kinds of experiences would you say that really kind of either got your goat kind of dealt with you know the dark side of things uh because we all know that's there yeah um i think the hardest part for me was living up to and do not take this personally was dvc member expectations no i don't i don't take that personally i know exactly what you're talking about because there are a lot of there, yeah, as Danny's like, yeah, it's, you know, it, it, it's, it's sometimes, let's face it, there, I, I've seen it in Disney groups where some DVs, I'm, I'm embarrassed at some DVC members at their attitudes about being DVC members. So no, no, no offense taken. No, um, I think there was a lot of, you know, joining a company like that right out of college and really trying to be part of the magic and trying to deliver magical moments and stay, you know, do what's good for your job and do what your leaders need, but also kind of deliver magic to the guests. Um, It almost created incentive to find those guests that were fun to be with and make magical moments for them uh, because it kind of brightened up your day from living up to all the other expectations, right? So, um, you'd have the guests that would come in and be like, let me just check myself in. I've you know, been here more than you, longer than you've been alive. Or you've had the guest who would say, you know, why, is, why didn't the dome come over the park while it rained? Like, you, I can't express enough how much the expectations of delivery from Disney um, continues to go up and up every year. Um, Danny, didn't, we, didn't you and I talk about this not too long ago, the whole idea that, you know, people are starting to expect more and more from Disney. And now we're, now we're hearing it from Hannah, you know, from that. Aspect. Hillary, not I'm Hillary. Sorry. I'm sorry. I'm looking at him. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Danny, if you could please put their names back on the screens. Cause I don't have Freudian slips as I'm looking at the different squares. I'd really appreciate it. As is what Hillary is, is saying is something that you and I talked about just recently. No, and you're a hundred. You know, sad. people don't go work for Disney just to clock in and clock out. They have meaning and purpose behind it. And they really want to deliver to the guests, right? They really want to create those moments for them. Um, And so it is emotionally draining on the cast member to not be able to meet those expectations. Yeah, I I could definitely get that. I mean, the whole whole concept of trying to get, you know, that whole five-star rating every time that you, you know, you interact with somebody. And the funny part about it is, is that I think cast members – 
have it even rougher with social media being at an all time high because unfortunately if you do one thing that a guest doesn't think is magical or magical enough even that you're horrible and you're going to get blasted all over social media. And, you know, if you've done something great, you may hear something good on social media or you may get a Ooh. little, little, little blit. Or people what you could do that because that one person got it. Say, say it again, yes. Mara. I said, or everyone expects that magical moment because that one person got it and put it on social media. Yes. So, um, but also what you could do for a cast member, which is completely unknown to most guests in the park, um, is go find a leader. If you found a particularly great moment with a cast member, you saw somebody go above and beyond for you, you can go find a leader uh, or go find guest relations and tell them you want to recognize a cast member and they will give them something it's called just, it's a little recognition card. It's a four key fanatic card um, in recognizing that they've lived up to the company values, right? Um, so those are really, really nice to get because they are so rare. Yes. Yeah. Did you ask Hillary you, if. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Go ahead, Danny. Danny, 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 that, Danny does Danny. that really happen? Like, does it, you know. When if I go to a cast member and I you know, or if I go to a lead and say, Hey, this, you know, Hillary did a great job. This is awesome. Does that fall on deaf ears at times though? Like if the if the park is mobbed, are they really taking the note or are they really going to that cast member and recognizing them for what it what they did? Yeah, so Hillary, kind of what Danny was saying, and I really apologize for our other listeners having <laughs> me to relay. This is a great question though. Um, do you feel that at times that even a guest compliment can actually fall on deaf ears with, you know, for a lead or a guest services just because of things being so busy or just otherwise you have a, a dare I say a non-attentive lead or something like that. I mean, do you think things like that happen often as well? Or are, are cast members really being recognized every chance that they, they can get? Um, so I'll kind of give, I had experience in, uh, doing kind of parade audience control. And then I had experience doing the front desk and concierge at multiple resorts. And every single time a guest told me like, you really made my day. Thank you so much for getting me this room or thank you so much for finding this for us or getting us this reservation. Um, I said, if you really, you know, if it really made a difference for you, it would make a difference to me to, you know, just tell that guy right over there or that lady right over there. Right. And every single time a guest went to a lead of mine, 100%, my lead would either handwrite the note for me or hand it to the guest, and the guest would write the, on that four key fanatic card to recognize me. That's um, excellent. I think by the end of my college program, probably because I pointed out my leads for the guests, um, I walked away with like 21 of those cards. You know what the funny part is, though? I, I've not. I've never had that experience and I have provided awesome feedback to different leads and managers and stuff like that. And I've never had anybody, you know, give you the card. Yeah. I've never had anybody give me a card. Um, so those managers must, or those leaders must be writing it, like taking the information, writing it back. I have seen leads do that where they take the information down. Like, what's your name? You know, what did you experience? And then later in the back, they will write down the card and hand it to the cast member. I got told to go on Twitter. Uh, yeah, yeah. Danny, Danny got told to go on Twitter. I got told one time to, uh, that to go on Twitter, and I have done it. it. My problem of it is, is that as a part of my own personal choice for vacationing, I tend to go to radio silence when I'm on Disney property. Um, so I don't normally tweet, but I don't. I, my my followers on Twitter and my followers within um, Facebook are two totally different groups. So I've been starting to do the what is it? It's um. I don't want to say it's WDW today. I had to find out what exactly what it is, but you used a hashtag cast cast compliment. Yeah. And, mm, and then I you think can, that's right. Yeah. Then you can yeah. go ahead and, <clears throat> and I've you seen put their name down. Yeah. You put their name down, say, you know, you know, Hillary from Chicago was a great minivan driver, you know, for us or something like that. And, um, we've, I've seen other people, actually get tweeted back with a picture of the person that they tweeted about with holding the, holding the certificate you know type of thing and i'm like that is really cool i've never seen that but i but i've seen other people <laughs> you know do that sort of thing. um so now we do have a couple <clears throat> a couple people 
that were actually uh, asking some some questions. Uh, let's see, let's see. Let me double check here. I want to make sure that we. Oh, the one question you can start with Hillary yeah. uh, was um, if they pay for oh. the professional interns. Did they actually pay for the professional internship program? In other words, I know that obviously it's a paid mm. position for a cast member, or excuse me, the cast yeah. bleh, college program cast member, but was the professional internship also a paid position? Oh, yeah, it was a pay bump. <laughs> <laughs> I went up $4 an hour. Wow, that's actually a nice jump. Even back then, that was that was you know that was you know a few and I say back then even a few years ago that is actually pretty good, um, so I'm gonna you know what everybody has asked me this on the side I'm gonna ask and if you guys don't want to answer it oh, man go, go right ahead you know simple simple thing there are some people that that and this is actually one of those tough questions because I know nobody really wants to get into the whole pay bit and I'm not asking for. You know, what did you guys make or anything like that? Oh, God, but, what are you doing? No, no, no. I just want to know. <laughs> I've heard so many people say it's really hard to survive as a cast member in the college program because you're either working or you're sleeping. And, you, and if you don't have this shift, you try to pick up other shifts. And, you you know, basically, you know, it's it's not a position where you're going to you know save. In fact, I, I had a, a good friend of ours, uh, you know, Danny and I both have this one listener that was actually trying to get into the college program. And she actually made the comment to me. She's like, if I get into the college program, I can save some extra money for college. And then and from what I understood was like, probably not. You're probably not going to be going into the college program in order to save money for college because you're going to be using that money for your daily adulting expenses, you know, room, board, your car, transportation, you know, Clothes, Mickey and, yeah, Mickey pretzels, and so on. Um, Mara, I'll start. I'll start with you. I mean, what was your experience just being able to live down there, just from a financial perspective, as a living perspective, cost of living perspective? What was your impression of that? Because I think a lot of people, you know, a lot of people really kind of have an idea. They have some ideas of what it is, but I'm also hearing that it's also a relatively challenging life you really have to do well with your money yeah um it it, it, wore, it was pretty well for me um i did run into one instance where my car basically broke down while i was down there and so i had to get a little help from my family with that one but other than that um it's true you're not going to make a lot and your the cost for your housing comes straight out of your paycheck and I actually did the math once. Um, it was about, mm, I don't remember exactly, but it was between 80, 110, somewhere in there per paycheck. And we had eight people living in my apartment. Oh my wow. Gosh. That's about $800 a week times four weeks. That is $3,200 a month <laughs> for one apartment room. So, Disney's Holy definitely um, getting their money for their housing, but it didn't put too much of a dent in my paycheck. I was still able to buy my groceries, put gas in my car if I needed to. Um, and most importantly, buy what I wanted with my cast member discount. So I'd see something I want. And I'd be like, yeah, I've, I've got the money for it. So I wasn't in such a bad position okay. that I couldn't splurge on the things that I wanted. But you um, had seven roommates. It, yes, uh, seven roommates. <laughs> I, you know, I and we all got along. Oh, that's, that's a surprise. That's magical. <laughs> I mean, that's like that's that's like poof, magic all over that. I mean, it was. Yes, I mean, Mara, was it co-ed or all girls? No, no, it is all single gender. Um, and then it's also separated by, I don't remember the technical term for it, but basically 21 and over and then 21 and under. But okay. then more along the lines of 21 and over and I want to drink. Or if you're 21 and over but you don't want to drink, you're allowed to room with people who are underage. Just y'all couldn't be caught with alcohol. Right. Uh, <clears throat> and and I, think that's kind of, I think that's kind of interesting that um, – Interesting in a good way that they would make an accommodation that th for that type of lifestyle. I don't want to say type of lifestyle because that really sounds horrible. But you know, the sense of you know 
if you're not the kind of person that drinks, you know, fine. You don't have to be around, you know, other people. You don't have to room with other people yeah. that do that as well. Um, and, and I think that would hopefully make the rooming situation um, a lot more sensible. But I, I have to ask, when you have seven roommates, I mean, I kind of think of, you know, how, ma- how many rooms were in your apartment and, <laughs> and, and, and did you guys – climb over each other for the bathroom i mean that's sort of, i mean i just so, I, can't, I can't picture it i can't picture that for some reason so i lived in chatham um all the apartments that i visited throughout the program were really really nice and i didn't really hang out with many people aside from my seven roommates but um you walked in there were stairs that went up and around and then uh you walked into where the kitchen was and it, it was pretty small kitchen, standard, you know, one bedroom apartment kitchen, and then a pretty good size living room. Uh, You had a dining room table, you had a couch and a chair, and then a place for a TV and a balcony. And then on the right side of the room was one bedroom and then a Jack and Jill bathroom and then other bedroom. And then on the left side was the same deal. So you really only had four people sharing one bathroom on either side. Okay. That's, that's not horrible. Hillary was. Oh, your so there's only two it's people in the room. Then that's not bad. Yeah, only two people, two people in the room. Per room. I yeah. literally pictured a giant room with like four stacks of like beds on top of each other. Oh, like bunk well, beds? it's funny you mention that because after I left, they started putting bunk beds in, and your eight-person room has all of a sudden turned into a ten-person room, a twelve-person apartment. Oh. I don't know the specifics, but I just got to say I'm glad that uh, I was not a part of that. I, Ew. I, I guess I guess you could say that's why I was so shocked when I when I was stopped and said you know eight people, you know, I can't picture that. I mean, I, I, I when I went to school there was we had some we had some dorm rooms that were suites that you know that would fit up to like five people, but I had you know, a couple single rooms, couple double rooms in that same type of configuration, huge bathroom, you know, this that and the other, and I thought that was, you know almost more communal than anything else. That is, that's actually really interesting. But the thing is, is that kind of going off of what you're saying though, you probably, first off, did you choose to be in a living arrangement with eight people in order to keep your living costs down? Yes. Okay. So I don't know that it was so much to keep the living costs down, but um, I do remember specifically choosing an eight person apartment and then we filled out roommate surveys on a group on Facebook to try to figure out who we would be the most compatible with. And I was actually the eighth person to come into my apartment. So everyone else had already paired off. And then um, I was roomed with the one who didn't have a partner. Her partner actually backed out. And so then I came in and like I said, we all hit it off really well and it was magic. <laughs> well, that's, that's, that's cool. I mean, cause it's like, Obviously, if, I'm going to make the assumption that, you know, given certain other rooming arrangements, you probably would be spending more on room and, you know, room on the rooms type of thing than than you were with eight people. So also depending on where. Cause probably. I, know, I know it's location, location, location. <laughs> so um, Hillary. Was, it did help that we all worked different shifts. Too. Oh, I can understand it as well. Hillary, <laughs> did you have a very similar type of situation when it came to. Um, when it came to housing? I was sitting here trying to think of the apartment complex I lived in. It wasn't Chatham, but it was right across the cul-de-sac from Chatham. Patterson. Thank you. I was like, it's a P word and I couldn't think of it. (laughs) Um, I live literally right across the cul-de-sac from Chatham and I was one of four. And I chose that deliberately. Uh, You could have chosen as much as eight or I think you could have chosen as little as a one bedroom that you shared with one. Yeah. And... um, I remember trying to put it in perspective for like other locations. Florida tends to be pretty great um, real estate cost wise. So like even just putting it in perspective here, like my apartment in my two bedroom, two bathroom apartment in DC is the equivalent of her four bedroom, two bathroom in Florida. Right. So that puts a little bit of cost perspective. I was never really concerned with the sharing rooms or sharing a bathroom um, and then the cost coming right out of my paycheck 
was nice because I didn't have to worry about the paying rent. It was taken care of and done. Um, I guess I went in feeling very lucky. I had an, well, a, a job after graduating, um, and B knowing I was going into an internship where I very likely could have had an unpaid internship and still trying to been figuring out living expenses. Um, as far as what I, as what people earned, I had friends earning as low as the, you know, federal minimum or Florida minimum wage, which I not sure if that's the same as the federal minimum wage, um, or not, but I had friends also earning as much as like $10 an hour in the college program. Um, I don't know if people made more than that. Um, and I, I just, I wouldn't have any data just kind of to back that up. Um, I could tell you that a lot of the people who made more were in, uh, entertainment. Okay, entertainment. And what, what do they consider to be in, in entertainment? Like an, a, being an actor, or actress, uh, a performer? Um... People who are friends with the characters. I understand that. Or parade entertainment. Yes. Right. That, yeah. That, I was kind of thinking more of the parade or streetmosphere or things like that. Mm-hmm. But if, of course, if they're friends with characters, of course, that's also really good too. Um, yeah, because I mean, I've I've actually yeah. been to a party in one of those um, apartments they're talking about. You've been to a, one of the. You've been to a party at one of those apartments. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, Disney cast members can hang out, man. They're good people. <laughs> for some good people. for some reason, Danny, I've seen you. I've seen you. Um, <laughs> I've I've seen you let your hair down before, and boy, I, I wish I wish I can. I wish I would have seen that. That would have been awesome. Um, yeah, it was cool. Um, I actually got to hang out with. Actually, no, I can't. I can't. Now they're still working. Yeah, don't, month. don't, uh, don't discriminate those. Don't incriminate. <laughs> yeah, yeah, discri- yeah, yeah. I thought I they, they weren't working in there, so I was gonna say what they did, and then I was like, oh wait, now they all, they all still work there. Yeah, um, Mara, did you, um, did your battery go dead? I think Mara's battery went dead. Yeah. No, I, can I hear, see and hear her. I see and hear her perfectly fine. Oh, I don't see. I see a black screen and I can't hear it. Oh, no, it's happening again. <laughs> so it's starting all over. You can't see Mara. Hillary can't see me. Chris, your box is a little bit smaller tonight than normal. Wow, this is awesome. Good night. I know, good night. Yeah, this, you know, thank goodness we're almost yeah. at the end of it. How about this? Kick Mara out. Bring Mara back in. Let's see if we can all bring right, let's, let's see. see. Well, I, I'll, talk, I'll talk to Hillary for a minute. Um, now, so here's here's the interesting question that I have for you. As you got more down through the professional range of of things, you know, you did your professional internship, you actually got into a full time gig um, with Disney. Um, I guess I guess my question is this: I mean, how long were you in your actual full time professional position within Disney? About I started in. April of 2013 and left in March of 2014. So about 11 months. Okay. So if you don't want, don't mind me asking what shifted your thought process to, I guess you could say find opportunities elsewhere, especially if it was one of those things you really loved. Um, so that's actually a great question and it had nothing to do with working for Disney uh, and everything to do with career growth opportunities. Um, so like I said, just from an internship perspective, there is 14,000 interns from the college program every year. And that doesn't include the professional interns that are also seeking full-time roles post internship. Um, and then you have 67,000 cast members in Orlando alone. Right. And some of those people who have been there their entire lives continuing to look to grow, um, and I had some very sincere conversations with leaders. It's actually one of the things I felt was probably the most impactful on my career and has actually made me a better worker and a better leader and even a better consultant for my clients right now is the amount of time that they took to listen to me, listen to what was important to me and what I wanted to do uh, with my career, what I wanted to do long term. And they were very honest with how long it would take to get to that spot if I just stayed at Disney. Um, And so they gave me the freedom to make a fully informed decision and go take another risk at another company to gain some more responsibility and experience. And they, they always welcome me back for what they call a boomerang. 
Okay, and I could, I could see that. I mean, in other words, if you really wanted to go back, the door would be partially open for you already then. Oh, yeah. One of the directors in my sales department wrote my recommendation to grad school. Um, I stay in touch with them and his wife uh, via Facebook and social media. Um, I also had still keep in touch with a lot of those network contacts that I made when I told you in the college program, some of the leaders from the leadership class I took, like Mara. Um, I still have conversations with those people today. I actually had a conversation maybe a couple months ago with one of the directors at Disney Institute, which is Disney's consulting arm and could possibly be a good fit for me a couple years down the road. Yeah, that, that would be really cool. I mean, my, um, I, I, I have a, a relative of mine that's actually been kind of involved with um, doing speaking engagements with the Disney Institute, and he absolutely loves those types of opportunities uh, to talk with them, et cetera. So that's actually, that's actually really cool, too. Um, I'll tell you what, <clears throat> we do have a couple of fun questions from, from our uh, viewing audience right now. One person, actually, Kimberly, wanted to, met, wanted to ask, so between the two of you, um, who's the biggest celebrity that you guys have ever that you've had a, that you've seen, either seen or oh had to deal with? Oh, okay, okay, <laughs> okay. I've had a total freak out nerd moment, um, and I'm trying to remember his name. Like it's too late on a Thursday night. My brain is fried. I can remember the place <laughs> I used to live. Um, but I was checking in this gentleman and his wife for the DVC cruise, and he was stopping at Saratoga before they went to Cape Canaveral. And he hands over his credit card to check in for his reservation. And it's got the like theater masks on it. I was like, oh, what a cool credit card. He's like, oh, you only get it if you're in the Actors Guild. And I was like, in the Actors Guild? Like, that's super cool. What do you do? And I like um, Bill Farmer. It was Bill Farmer. Oh, oh my gosh. gosh. He did the goofy voice. The yes. rest yeah. of the second. Yes. I freaked out. I almost fainted where I stood. <laughs> It was absolutely incredible. And then the follow-up to that was the uh, Broadway Mufasa, which I almost died. So um, that was a particularly great check-in day for me. <laughs> wow. I, I can see that. Mara, what about you? I don't have a fun story. Um, <laughs> I had a lot of close calls. Um, so one of the shifts that I picked up was over in Storybook Circus at the tent. Mm -hmm. And it happened to be the same day that they were shooting um, – the episode of the middle when they came oh, to yeah. Walt Disney World. Oh my gosh, it's one but of our I didn't say anyone. That, that's one of our <laughs> that, then, was, that was one of our favorite episodes. And then um, there was one day that we were walking through Epcot and it just happened to be um, the day that Corbin Blue proposed to his girlfriend. And so we actually walked right past them. But it's so funny, like I looked right at him, didn't know who he was, and as we got past my roommates were like that was Corbin Blue. And then they immediately got on Instagram and was like, he just proposed. It was like, it was a big thing. Danny, but once you, again, didn't even recognize him. So there went my shot. <laughs> Danny, do you, do you even know who Corbin Blue is? <clears throat> and then my roommate um, worked at Space Mountain, one of my roommates, and she, Molly Cyrus came in and got on Space Mountain. and oh, That's cool. She's not a big fan of Molly Cyrus, so she was like, yeah. I do know who that is, though. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I brought. I still have it. It sits on my desk from that check-in. Oh, oh, he wow. signed the picture. Wow. That is. So. That is. We're. You know what? We're gonna have to. We're gonna have to see if we can ask Bill Farmer to come on the show. That would be just like <laughs> that. Not only would it be totally awesome, but I know my my daughter would be total fangirl. Um, oh my gosh, my, he was my, absolutely you know, incredible and so friendly. Oh, that's awesome. Ask them Starbucks or Joffrey's. So yeah, Starbucks or Joffrey's. We have a we have a listener that really wants to know badly. Uh, the whole time I was there, I was drinking Joffrey's. Now that's my girl. Okay. So, what about the other one? I wasn't a big coffee person back then, um, but going back after having been a cast member, I watch way too much of Game of Thrones, and I have to go to Starbucks. <laughs> and she's gonna sit out for a few minutes. I told you, you do not talk junk 
about oh. that Starbucks on this show. <laughs> Danny, you're a horrible <laughs> producer. You're, you're, you're a horrible <laughs> producer by kicking her off just because she said Starbucks. Oh my gosh, you know, gee willikers. So just to let everybody know, but before the show today, I told Danny, "Go, Danny, let me go ahead and produce the show tonight." No, no, I've got it all covered. So I was try, I was going to try to be nice, but you know, hey. Um, so, <laughs> oh my gosh, well, you know, we're actually getting towards the. Um, top of our time today and and this is this is actually i'll be honest with you this has been one of the fastest time feel type of programs that we've had in a while and i i think we could probably talk another hour if we really wanted to um kind of as we as we get to close out a little bit um i guess i guess i'd like to know from you guys you know your honest opinion that or I should say your your most honest advice that if someone really wanted to work for Disney um, and they really needed to be realistic about working for Disney, what would you, you know, what would be a good piece of advice for them? And, and Hillary, because of the sound issues and stuff like that, I'm actually going to have you go ahead and answer first. Am I back on? Yes, you are. <laughs> <laughs> we'll um, say not for long. Yeah. Okay. So my best advice for working for Disney would probably be, well, number one, do the college program. Like 100%, you will talk to so many leaders who say, my CP was, when I was a CP, what I did when I interned, you know, every lead has a college program story. Um, and that makes it really powerful because just about every lead you work with or talk to started on the front lines. Um, I would say. Uh oh. Oh, and we lost her. Did so, Mara, what is your favorite story? Favorite experience? My favorite experience or my best advice? Oh, sure. Best advice. We'll go with that one. Okay. Uh, just because that's what she was answering. Yeah, that's fine. Um, my best advice would be very, very similar. Um, you know, I, I had my, my leaders that were also mentioning their college program. Um, you have to really answer the question if we're going to do a college program. You have to figure out when the time is going to be best for you um, in terms of what semester am I going to do this. For me, uh, I had a lot of friends who did it, and so it really – that timing didn't hit me until my last semester, so I just happened to do it my last semester. Um, but there are a lot of people who do it – in the middle of their college experience, and then they never go back to college. So if you do it during your college experience, you have to make sure that you're dedicated to going back to school. Because if you get there and you make all these connections with your leaders and your leaders are telling you, yeah, you're cut out for this. You know, I think you could um, advance in the company really easily, but then you never go back to finish your degree that's not going to help you. So, um, you know, just making sure your timing is right. And then the other part of it is making sure that your yourself, that you are mentally prepared to live in another state away from your family, that you are ready to, you know, take transportation on your own, um, wake yourself up in the morning. I can't tell you how many, um, not only coworkers from, my time at Disney, but also friends who went to college and they still don't know how to wake themselves up in time for class. But uh, on the emotional side of things, like I didn't even know I was missing my family. I've had already been moved out of my house for a few years at that point. But when they came down, they showed up at Candy Cauldron one night and I just started bawling. I didn't even know I'd missed them that much. And I just, it was overwhelming for me to see them you know i and after that i was good i was like all right let's knock the rest of this program out so now are you uh currently doing uh what you went to school for in your re current job i am yes i went to school and got my degree in uh fine arts uh with a focus on graphic design and that is what i'm currently doing awesome that's super cool, cool. All right, Chris, you got anything else since it doesn't look like Hillary's making her way back in? I'm assuming her laptop probably died. Yeah, you know, um, I, I was thinking to myself, no, nah, Danny couldn't have booted her out again. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, no, but, you know, I, I, 
I would say this to Hillary if she was here. I, Mara, thank you so much for sharing your experiences. I mean, really seriously, I think our time just wasn't long enough here to to really get more into this. I I think we're going to have to do this again. And, um, you know, by all means, I know that there's probably a ton of people that would love to have not just a job at Disney, but a career at Disney. And I think there are some different things, you know, to look at that. Um, I think we're seeing a couple different um, types of types of positions, types of opportunities where not every job is created equal at Disney and you can go down different paths. And, you know, obviously the sounds like, you know, being a part of the college program, college program is going to give people something of an edge. And, um, you know, it's really interesting to hear that because also, Danny, if you think about it, we talked to two people here tonight that were not a part of the parks at all. Hi, Hillary. Welcome back. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was joking around with Danny a moment ago saying, you really didn't kick her out again, did you? Um, <laughs> I think so, he did. Hillary, uh, can you hear me now? I can. Hi. Hey, and, and that's our show tonight, everybody. So, <laughs> well, you know, I was, I was just kind of, kind of wrapping us up. But you know, if you would like to, you know, finish, you know, you, what you were happening, happening to say as well, um, I would, I'd appreciate it. I know that you probably don't remember where you left off, but <laughs> I probably left off somewhere with do a college program. Um, and I think I heard Mara give some advice to that, like, know when you want to do it, right? Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Before I fully left off. So I think the best piece of advice I could just add on to that is you're going to go in and be surrounded by people who are just as Disney obsessed and Disney knowledgeable. And you're going to be impressed by how much people know and how dedicated people are and how long they've been there um, and how much their role actually means to them. And to embrace it and don't be intimidated by it. Um, I think a lot of people kind of, they get surrounded by all of these, all of these things that are happening and can get a little bit thrown off. Keep, stay true to yourself. Um, recognize that you are working somewhere. Um, if you're like me, you'll drink the Kool-Aid and drink it often, but it is definitely, is definitely a magical place to be. So don't be intimidated by everything that's going on around you. I think that's a really good piece of advice. I think that really is a good piece of advice. Um, you know, and, and I'll go ahead and I asked, I asked Mara this, or I, let me rephrase that as I was closing a little bit. Do you think that it would, that it was easier for you to continue to go down the career path at Disney because you were a part of the college program? 100%. I think that having that college program experience is a an easy connector between all of the people that stay and stick around. And um, a lot of people do stick around and never go back to college. Um, so that does happen. Um, I think it was great for me that I did it after graduation. And I think I got a lot of great experiences, although I've seen people who took a semester, did an internship, went back to school for a semester, came back, you know, took them longer to graduate. But when they were done, they were pretty much set up for the full-time role uh, that they wanted because they had had two or three semesters of opportunities to network and really hone in on what they wanted to do for Disney. Okay. I definitely all get right. it. I definitely get it. Um, well, by all means, <laughs> I know we've had some technical glitches today. And you know what? I think it just adds character to what we do here because we are who we are. And we, we love every person that, <laughs> that watches us, listens to us, joins us on the show. It makes us, you know, just as real as we can be. Danny, any, any final words as well? No, we, you know, we appreciate you both coming on. And uh, hopefully we can set this up in the near future again and maybe dive a little deeper into <clears throat> not the college program aspect, but the everyday mantra of working inside of Disney. Yeah. So uh, hopefully we can set that up. Ladies, thank you so much again for coming on and uh, have yourselves a wonderful weekend. Have a magical night. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. All right, Danny. Well, here we go. Take us away. You heard the show and we hope you want more. Well, feel free to join us over at our social media platforms. Instagram and our Facebook page can be found at Behind the Ears Podcast. Our webpage is BehindTheEarsPodcast.net and our email is BehindTheEarsPodcast at gmail.com. And our Twitter handle is at Behind the Ears PC. 
and come and join the conversation about all things Disney over at the WDW Community page. Don't forget to rate and review the show over at iTunes or Apple Podcasts as it really helps us get the word out about the show. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the show on iTunes or Apple Podcasts or the Podbean app. Also, you can listen to us on Stitcher Radio, iHeartRadio, TuneIn Radio, and via Alexa and Google Herd. Oh, thank you, ladies, once again for joining us here. And thank you. Thank all of you for joining us here on a Thursday evening. Uh, you just listened to a live recording of a little podcast we like to call Behind the Ears Podcast. Now, podcast listeners, this is not going to be relevant for you. Live viewers, this is relevant for you. People, hey, we have less than, tw- well, way less than 24 hours now. Uh, we're probably looking at about nine hours until the voting closes. Uh, judging by what I can see, we've got a good amount of votes in there. If you're saying, what are we voting for? Well, we are an award-winning podcast, thank you very much, but I would like to add another piece of hardware to that shelf. I would like for next Indie Disney Me to be able to get announced and be like, oh, the multi-award-winning podcast. So we need you guys to go out there. It, the link is up on either the Behind the Years podcast page, my personal page, Chris's personal page, the WDW community page, any of those pages. It literally will take you six seconds. Just vote for us and uh, help us bring home another piece of hardware um chris before we say our goodbyes do you want to touch on the other thing well also don't forget that if you are interested in joining our current contest which is totally unrelated to the whole voting thing uh, gotta make sure that yes. we're not saying hey we're the contest and voting no 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 um Make sure you you go ahead and listen to our podcast episode that it describes how you can go ahead and enter but you know what I'm going to tell you this really quick. If you send us a piece of email at behindyearspodcast at gmail.com, leave us a comment, a question that we can use on the show. Um, we will go ahead and enter you into a contest where you can win a package of pumpkin spice coffee by Expedition Roasters. Um, and we also have second through sixth prizes. of We have five swag packs that we're also giving away as well. And if you also show us a screenshot of you subscribing to our show in iTunes or whatever your favorite podcast catcher is. Uh, and also it would be even great if you in, uh, rated and reviewed the show as well. We're going to throw in an additional entry to that, con- to that contest. The winners will be drawn after our show next Tuesday, uh, which is the, which is the ninth, I believe. And winners will be notified by email. All of the information is over at a podcast episode near you. With that being said, everybody, once again, this is Behind the Ears Podcast. I am Uncle Danny. That was Mr. Chris. We thank you from the bottom of our hearts for voting, for donating to our cause a few months back, and just being an awesome group of people hanging out with us here on another Thursday evening. Uh, With that being said, tuck your kids in tight, wear your seatbelts, have yourself a wonderful weekend. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. We really love y'all, and we just are so glad to have you here tonight. Sorry for the technical difficulties, but as I said, it just makes us more unique when we leave it all in there. Thanks a lot, and we will see you again real soon. Take care.